let me start with a few non-reproductive tissues. You can see the lower end of the lumbar region here. This is the sacrum. You can see all the way down to the coccyx as well. Again, part of the skeletal system. Here we have the end of the sigmoid colon. This is the rectum. And then even on this one, you can see the external anal sphincter muscle. So again, this would be for the process of defecation. On this model, you can also see um, some structures that are in place for the urinary system. So on the right side, this would be the right ureter. Over here, this would be, it's cut off, but you could imagine coming up like this, the left ureter. So this is what brings urine down from the kidneys to the bladder. This is the bladder. And then when the bladder's emptied, obviously when someone goes to the bathroom, they empty the bladder and that urine travels down the length of the penis. So you can see the shaft of the penis. The tip here is called the glans penis. We also have the pubis bone. Um, this would be the superior ramus. This is the inferior ramus. If you remember the way that the hips are organized, there's that little opening in the front there. It's called the obturator foramen. Um, that's kind of this, you can see a little portion of this right here. So when we take a few structures off, because this model comes apart, you can start to see um, the pathway of reproductive tissues. So let me um, kind of take this off as we go, but I'll start right here. This is the scrotum. The scrotum is the sac that encases the testes. So this is a testicle. Uh, this is where spermatogenesis takes place. That's the formation of sperm cells. Uh, those sperm cells eventually make their way into this structure here called the epididymis. From the epididymis, those sperm cells travel all the way up the spermatic cord. So the spermatic cord, again, traveling from the outside of the body, eventually makes its way internally. And if I tilt this down just a little, you may be able to see this right here. This is called the inguinal canal. That's that little opening right there that basically leads, you can kind of think of it like from the outside of the body to the inside of the body. So here, those sperm cells would travel all the way along and at this point, we don't call it the spermatic cord anymore. We call it the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. That's this tube that leads along this side. This would be coming from the left side that I'm pointing at here. Way over here, you cannot see it, but same thing would be happening on the right side as well. So the sperm cell, pardon me, those sperm cells travel all the way around the posterior side of the bladder, and they meet up with this structure right here. This is called the seminal vesicle. I'm going to take this off in one second here, but I want to point out one more before I do. That is the prostate gland. Again, these are male reproductive tissues. Seminal vesicle and prostate gland. Now, if I take this off, again, you can see this is just a mirror image of what's on the inside. In fact, if you look at this one closely, on the inside of the bladder, you can actually see the opening of where this, it's going to be this ureter, comes down from the kidneys. So that's where urine is going to go into the urinary bladder. You actually see the same thing over here as well. So at this point though, again, sperm cells are going to travel uh, from the testes to the epididymis, up the spermatic cord, through this inguinal canal, all the way around this vas deferens, and they're going to meet up with this right here. That's the seminal vesicle. You see that seminal vesicle right here as well. So at this point, when these sperm cells are traveling, they meet up with the seminal vesicle because the seminal vesicle produces semen. Semen is the fluid that these sperm cells are swimming within. And they meet up basically at this point right here. We call this the ejaculatory duct. And at this point, the ejaculatory duct, these sperm cells now swimming in semen are going to pass through the urethra, the same line that urine passed through as was happening when, when a male urinates. 
But at this point here, we since this is the prostate gland, again, this is obviously a, a sectional view of it, it's cut, but this is what we call the prosthetic urethra. Then it passes through this muscle tissue right here. This is called the urogenital diaphragm. And there's underneath here, again, you cannot see it, but there's something called the membranous urethra. So prosthetic urethra, membranous urethra, and then those sperm cells travel all the way through this right here. It's called the spongy urethra. We call this the spongy urethra because this tissue around it, and I'm pointing at it here in the, in the gland's penis, but this tissue around it is called corpus spongiosum. Corpus spongiosum. You can kind of think of it having, having a spongy appearance to it. Uh, contrast that with other erectile tissue. This is called the corpus cavernosum. You can see these little caverns here that get engorged with blood during sexual arousal. So what happens here is sperm cells travel all the way down and out and exit through the external urethral orifice, which essentially is the tip of the penis where urine or, in this case, sperm cells uh, and semen would, would travel out from.